Lung abscess is basically necrosis and cavitation of the lung following the microbial infection. And it could be single or of multiple in number. And uh, as its incidence has decreased drastically in the era of use of antibiotic, that is in our era. However, if it is present, uh, it is a still a uh, topic of concern because it has got significant mortality and morbidity. And the mortality rates are... Uh, varies and it could be 2% in cases of primary abscess and it can uh, increase largely up to 75% in case of secondary lung abscess. Now moving on to the classification, according to the etiology, it can be classified as primary lung abscess or a secondary lung abscess. And the most of the cases are of a primary lung abscess, that is in 80% of the cases. And in these cases, abscess usually arise from the aspiration. And hence, the primary cause of the abscess are the anaerobic bacteria. And it usually occur in the absence of any underlying lung or a systemic condition. However, in case of secondary lung abscess, it arises in the setting of an underlying condition, such as post-obstructive process in the uh, lungs, which can be due to the bronchial foreign body or tumor, or can be due to a systemic process like uh, immunocompromising state like HIV infection. And lung abscess can be classified according to duration into acute and chronic. If long, lung abscess uh, duration is less than six weeks, then it is classified as acute lung abscess. And if the duration is of more than six weeks, then it is known as chronic lung abscess. Now, moving on to the risk factor. For the primary lung abscess, the sole risk factor is aspiration. And we all know that in healthy individuals, due to the presence of the gag reflex and other reflex, it's not possible for a healthy individual to aspirate. So aspiration usually occurs in the patient who has altered mental status, uh, who, who have uh, drug abuse or the history of seizure, who have bulbar dysfunction or who have got prior cerebrovascular, cardiovascular events. Or if there is any structure or eso, uh, esophag in the esophagus or there is any esophageal dysmobility or the patient has GRD. Now moving on to the secondary lung abscess, the risk factors are, or can be uh, various like in the patient who have uh, bronchial obstruction, uh, it could be due to the malignancy or due to the foreign body. Or the patient may have got uh, immunosuppressed uh, state like the patient may have got HIV or the patient may have just undergone some solid or liquid uh, organ transplantation or it can even arise from septic emboli either in tricuspid valve endocarditis or in cases of Lemire syndrome. And Lemire syndrome is caused by Fusobacterium necrophy, necrophorum and it usually infection originates in throats and spreads via septic thrombo phlebitis of the tonsillar vein and internal jugular vein. Now moving on to the pathology and microbiology. As I have told you, in cases of primary lung abscess, the uh, sole uh, reason for the primary lung abscess is your aspiration and the most and the organism in, uh, is anaerobic organism because for the aspiration, all the organism that cause, in case of aspiration, all the organism that causes lung abscess are from the uh, oral pharynx. So all the organisms that's present in the oral pharynx are responsible for the primary lung abscess. And those organisms include Peptostreptococcus species, uh, Prevotella, or the microurophilic strobe. Streptococci. And if we do the culture in case of primary lung abscess, it's usually polymicrobial. And there is a term known as non-specific lung abscess. Uh, if we do the uh, culture and we we find out that the organism is anaerobic, then they are known as non-specific lung abscess. And if a patient has got a very fall, smelling sputum, then, then the such patients are no, known to have putrid lung abscess, and it's usually seen in primary lung abscess. Now, moving on to secondary lung abscess, the most common cause of secondary lung abscess is pseudomonas aeruginosa and other gram gram negative rods like enterobacteriaceae. However, the gram positive organism like Staphylococcus aureus can also get involved. And in the area like uh, Nepal, where there is very common in for tuberculosis, the organism can be mycobacterium tuberculosis or other non TB causing myco bacterium like mycobacterium avium. Now, how does the uh, patient presents uh, 
Now moving on to the clinical manifestation. Uh, patient may present with the fulminant course or by with the chronic course. In cases of patient who has got uh, non uh, non anaerobic organism infection due to non non aerobic anaerobic organism such as gram positive organism such as Staphylococcus aureus, they present with usually present with fulminant course uh, that is characterized by high fever and rapid progression. And um, the patient who has uh, got usually has primary lung abscess, they may present with chronic and indolent presentation. Usually the patient will say they have, say they have night soit, fatigue, and anemia. And the other common uh, presentation include fever, which is usually high grade, which, which is usually associated with uh, chills and rigors, cough, sputum production, and chest pain. And when you do the physical examination, you can find out the patient has fever, poor dentition, and as I've already told you, they may be absent of gag reflex, uh, so that patient may have predisposition to predisposition to aspiration. And on examination, you could find out the desert. you can find out digital clubbing, and on auscultation, just auscultation, you can hear the amphoric or cavernous breath sounds. Now moving on to the differential diagnosis. Uh, there are a lot of differential diagnoses in the back of your head. You must put out there can be uh, some non-infectious or infectious process going on. Uh, in, the patient may have, uh, you should also think that uh, the patient may have malignancy or any cavity to release lung lesions or it could be due to the cryptogenic organizing pneumonia or the patient may have sarcoidosis, vasculitis and other autoimmune diseases. Or patient may have got lung cysts or bulla containing fluid, or it could be a septic emboli from a tricuspid valve endocarditis. And all the common uh, entities uh, that uh, can uh, include uh, the pulmonary manifestation of the systemic disease like inflammatory bowel disease or pyoderm gangrenosum. Now, how do you diagnose? the case when the patient presents with uh, chest pain fever and all the foul smelling sputum then what are you going to people going to do the first is you shed for the sputum gram stain and culture and it is a non-invasive process process however not specific that's the first thing to do now the second thing you must do is you order for a chest radiogram and you ch in chest radiogram you'll see a thick wall cavity with an your fluid Label. However, for the better uh, definition and diagnosis, uh, computed tomography is the investigation of the chest. However, in such cases, patients who have long abscess, you should always uh, send for the blood culture. And the other uh, test uh, that include if uh, it is uh, the diagnosis is still confused and you want to isolate the organism, then the other test you can do is bronchoscopy with bronchoalveolar lavas or uh, you can do a protected press specimen collection, or you can also look for the CT guided percutaneous needle aspiration. However, it is an invasive procedure and it's not without side effects. And the uh, other complication includes spillage of abscess content into the other lung with bronchoscopy. And even in some cases, it may lead to pneumothorax and bron bronchopleural fistula development, especially in cases with CT guided needle aspiration. However, in uh, invasive diagnostic uh, tests like transtracheal aspiration used to be a previous uh, old age uh, choice of investigation. However, we rarely take this, uh, take this process for the diagnosis. Now, moving on to the treatment uh, for primary lung abscess, uh, the, we have to usually cover the anaerobic uh, organism. And as you know that the most common organism is of the oropharynx, uh, that is the organism like Peptostreptococcus, Privotella, Microaerophilic, Streptococci, the, uh, the antibiotic of choice is clindamycin. And the dose is uh, 600 milligram IV three times daily. And uh, we should give the intravenous drug until there is a disappearance of fever and there is clinical improvement. And it usually takes uh, seven to 10 days and after that you can shift to oral uh, antibiotic uh, that is oral clindamycin 300 milligram per hour four times daily and the other uh, antibiotic of choice include beta lactam with beta lactamase combination and treatment should be uh, given until the imaging uh, demonstrate that the lung abscess has cleared or regressed to a small scar and it usually takes a lot of time that is usually four weeks to, uh, to 14 weeks and for a secondary lung abscess uh, you should give the antibiotic coverage according to the cause of the infection. So we should first identify the pathogen, pathogen then we should give the uh, antibiotic according to the pathogen and it 
Of course, the antibiotic course is also prolonged and it's given until there is a resolution of abscess in the radiograph. And you give, uh, you, a patient come to you, you do the examination, you subject it for investigation and you found out the patient has long abscess and you give the treatment. And now after, even after uh, three, four months, uh, there is no resolution then what next we can do uh, because it's a very uh, though it's rare it can be seen in 10 to 20 percent of the patient the patient may not respond at all and they may even have continued fever or the, you can even when you do the imaging you can feel, see that there is the progression of the abscess cavity and uh, this type of things are usually seen, seen if the long abscess has got the diameter of more than uh, eight centimeter uh, and so in this such cases you should know that uh, with antibiotics you need to you require the additional intervention the, and the additional intervention uh, that's required include surgical resection and percutaneous drainage of the abscess. However, as I've already talked to you, invasive procedure always has good complication and in case of percutaneous drainage of the abscess, uh, you can find bacterial contamination of the pleural space as well as the pneumothorax and hemothorax. Now, moving on to the complication of the long abscess, there can be persistent cystic changes, pneumatocyl or bronchiectasis, or the patient may have got, may have recurrence of abscess despite of the appropriate therapy or during the invasive procedure, uh, you may have the, got the extension of the abscess to the pleural space with the deployment of impyema, or it can lead to life threatening hemoptysis, or even you can lead to the massive aspiration of the long abscess. But then, this is all for today. Thank you.